Welcome to part six of the Home Networking Guide for Newbies. My name is Tony with the Quick Tech Solutions channel, and today we're gonna to talk about SSL proxy, what it is, why we need it, and how to get it installed on your computer. So what exactly is SSL proxy? So Grantstream defines SSL proxy as follows. SSL proxy is a server that uses SSL encryption to secure data transfer between a client and a server. It operates transparently encrypting and decrypting data without being detected. Primarily, it ensures the safe delivery of sensitive information over the internet. When SSL proxy is enabled, the GCC 6010 will act as an SSL proxy server for the connected clients. So in much simpler terms, for home users and for the purpose of this video, enabling this option allows the GCC 6010 to monitor traffic so that we can use options such as web filtering to protect our children and in a home environment that is critical. And that's why even though this is a more advanced topic, I'm covering it in this video series. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, in this segment, I hope to accomplish three things with you. The first is to get SSL proxy actually enabled on the GCC 6010. Once we do that, then I'm going to show you how to create a digital certificate. And once that's created, we're going to show you how to download that digital certificate, get it installed on your computer, having your computer trust that certificate so that we, one, don't get the actual annoying browser message that we sometimes see, but more importantly, so that the GCC 6010 can begin monitoring traffic or, as Grandstream puts it, act as an SSL proxy server. So, with that said, let me switch over now to the Grandstream documentation. I'll put a link to this document down in the video description for those of you that are interested. But it's all outlined here and it's pretty straightforward. So let's take a look real quick before we get into the actual configuration. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be working in the firewall module. We're going to be in the SSL proxy area. We have to get it enabled. We're going to go ahead and add our certificate by completing the fields here. And then we're going to go ahead and download it and install it in our computer. Now, if you look further down the document, there's an explanation of all the fields that have to be filled out. So again, I'll leave this down in the video description for those of you if you want to reference the document. Let's get over now into the actual GCC 6010 and begin the configuration. All right, so let's come over to the firewall module. From here, over in the left menu, select SSL proxy and then select basic settings. Under basic settings, we're going to enable SSL proxy by just toggling on the button. And then from here, you see we have the option of creating the CA certificate. So what is an actual CA certificate? It's nothing more than that digital certificate that I mentioned earlier, except that we're going to create it in the software now. Normally, a CA certificate comes from a certificate authority. That's what that CA means. And that is usually a trusted entity. But again, we're going to do it now in the software. And once we tell our computer to trust this CA certificate that we're going to create, then we should be good to go. So come over to the drop down menu. Now I have a couple here. Uh, obviously I've been playing and learning this device over the last couple of weeks, but you shouldn't have anything here if this is your first time in this area. So all you need to do is go ahead and click the green add button and then complete the fields. Now, something to pay attention to here. It says it should be one to 64 characters. As far as the name is concerned, only support input in numbers, letters, and special characters, but it does not support and then it lists the special characters here that are not supported. So be mindful when you select your name. Your name could be anything you want. Just be mindful of those parameters. So, so we don't abuse any of those parameters or, or type in something incorrectly. I'm just going to keep it really simple and we're going to call it test CA, no spaces, no let nothing just like that. We're going to come over to the key length and we're going to leave it set to 2048 but you do have other options 2048 is usually the recommended and then under the algorithm it defaults to SHA-1 but we're going to switch it to SHA-256 because it's just a stronger encryption and now you definitely have to put in expiration data in all the fields with the red asterisk are required fields so this is measured in days so you can make it 
whatever you want you can make it three months you can make it a year you can make it two years but i don't want to be bothered with it so i'm just going to go ahead for simplicity's sake make it longer than i am going to probably be in existence <laughs> and that is 9999 if you want to do the math to see how many days that converts to years go right ahead we don't have to worry about the sand but we do have to select our country and then fill out the rest of the required fields so for me let me go ahead and do that okay once you have all that filled in go ahead and click on save and then from the drop down menu you can't leave it empty you're going to click the certificate that you just created we're going to hit save and then you see the little download arrow here let's go ahead and download that certificate now to our computer and the final step we discussed for this segment is to get that downloaded certificate installed on the computer and have your computer trust it so let's move on to the next segment of the video all right congratulations if you made it this far into the video and into the series i know this particular video you might find a little daunting but I'm gonna give you guys an applause for making it this far. Congratulations and kudos. Okay, now that that is said, what we have to do now is install that certificate on our computer and tell our computer to trust it. That is the next step in the process. Now, what I should have pointed out to you in the last segment in the video is when you've downloaded the CA certificate that you created, just you should have noted where it was downloading to on your computer. Most of the time it will go to a download folder, but you might be set up a little differently. So I should have mentioned it then, so I'm mentioning it now. All right, that said, let me switch over to the computer because you don't need to see me on the screen for this and I wanna be able to zoom in for you. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and install the actual certificate on the Mac OS. Now, if you're running Windows PC, I'm not going to show you that one, but I am going to link out to a video that Willie Howe did on SSL inspection. And when he did it, he showed how to do the installation and get it installed on a Windows PC. So I will link to that up above and also put the link down in the video description. So for those of you on the Mac, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come up to the go menu and down to our utilities folder. And then we're going to come over and we're going to launch keychain access. And we're going to say open keychain access and then it typically would ask you to authenticate but i've already authenticated to it so we're good to go when it asks you to authenticate just go ahead and put in your machine default password and you should be good to go and then the next thing we need to do is come up to the file menu and say import items and now here's where we have to search over to the area where it was downloaded for me. That's my downloads folder. I'm there. We're going to come down and we're going to look for the certificate. And there it is, test CA. Let's go ahead and select it and then click open. And now it's asking me to authenticate again. And you can see it installed the test CA into the system area under certificates. But note, it's got a big red X going through it. So if we select it, you can see up here, it says this root certificate is not trusted. So that's the next step in the process. To get the computer to trust this certificate, we're gonna double click on the certificate itself. And then we're gonna open up where it says trust. And then where it says when using this certificate, instead of use system defaults, we're gonna say always trust. It fills in the rest. And once you close out of here, and authenticate again to update the settings. You should be good to go. And now you can see we no longer have the red X. And if we select it, now it says this certificate is marked as trusted for all users. I know this video might have been a little daunting, but you made it through. And again, this is an important step, even though it's a little bit more of an advanced topic. I did my best to try to keep it simple for you. Again, I know this is a home networking guide for newbies, so hopefully um, you're not too confused or not too lost at this point. But again, if you just follow the steps along in this video, you should be fine and get this successfully implemented. Okay, well, 
I hope you liked this video, and if you found any value in it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for next week's video, which is part seven, and we're going to be talking about web content filtering. And as always, if you'd like to see more content like this, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.